Order. I'm going to request that the city clerk call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Commissioner Friedland? Present. Commissioner Joel? Here. Commissioner Landman? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Narosky? Present. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. And Mr. Myers? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Ethan, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Good eye seeing me from all the way in the back, Madam Mayor. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And thank you, Ethan. Okay, the next item, and really the first item on the agenda, is based on prior motions and prior uh, resolutions passed by the commission. We have the rotation schedule, and Denise Landman, seat two, is the next person in line effective tonight to be serving as the vice mayor. So we all wish you congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not sure that we need a motion for this, Mr. Attorney since we already put it to be a rotation? Yeah, I think you should make a motion. Anyway. Fine. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded Second. by Commissioner Friedland. Um, I'm opening the motion to accept Denise Landman as vice mayor for public comment. Anyone from the co public wishing to comment? <laughs> Okay, I'm closing it for public comment. Um, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask the city manager if there are any deletions or additions to the printed agenda. Uh, none to report, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, I'll <laughs> I thought I thought we were pulling something. I thought we were pulling. When we get to consent, you are. No, I'm on four. I'm on four. So again, I'm going to ask city manager, are there any deletions or additions to the agenda? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I have none. Okay. I'll do the consent agenda separately. All right. I can only, I can only do what, what I'm given. All right. We, if you look around, you're going to see that we have far more people in our um, assembly than we normally have. And that's because this is a very, very special city, and it's special not because of us, it's special because of you. Because so many of you have given and given and given your time, your commitment, your knowledge, your wisdom, your kindness to making this city what it is. And tonight we're going to be doing quite a bit of recognizing of people for what they've done. But first of all, and, and I do want to say, you know, we ask our representatives, both our senator, Senator Jason Pizzo, and our representative, Joe Geller, and I'm sure Joe will be here, if not this meeting, in, in, a, pro, in a future meeting, to come and give us an update on what went on in Tallahassee this past session. Um, depending upon your point of view, it could have been a wonderful session, and it could have been uh, an absolutely awful session. So with great humility, because he's up there every single day, Saturday, Sundays included, fighting the noble battle for all of us, trying to get people to understand what is the right, humane way to function in government, I'm going to ask Senator Jason Pizzo if you would please come up and provide the update. Good evening, everyone. Please pardon my back. Um, 
It's, uh, it's a delight to be here and to be home. I uh, just got back yesterday from a wonderful trip to Israel. Uh, hello from Lior uh, to give me a nice tour. Uh, yeah, it, it's um, the, the, the takeaway from, from this past legislative session, if you were interested in the nonpartisan things that improve people's lives and safety and all that stuff, a little disappointing and a little underwhelming, and we should have done more. Uh, we're going back for a special session on the 23rd uh, to deal with property insurance, but I believe that call will be expanded to include other things, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to come to a compromise with the House and actually get some condo reform passed. Uh, we reached an impasse with the House on one particular issue, but we agree on 19 out of 20 issues. As I proudly represent uh, currently 15 cities, 545,000 people, uh, Aventura, as I told a reporter this afternoon, if they asked uh, for a model uh, commission or council in one of the cities I represent that it's a pleasure to serve in, I said, I'm going to one tonight, it's Aventura. And that's the truth. Um, you asked for one funding request this year on the 213th Street seawall repairs, a total project cost of $1.3 million. The city is kicking into 450, and should the governor not veto it, I'm proud to tell you that you're gonna be uh, funded for $850,000 from the state. Um, but it's de minimis compared to the contribution that the city of Aventura makes to the state. Um, and I, every year, you know, your lobbyists and, and your representatives are able to secure something, uh, hopefully. I do want to take this opportunity. Usually, uh, I'm accompanied by Ron Book, your lobbyist. Uh, Mr. Book is, is not doing so well, but he's going to get through it. Um, he's such a fighter. He's stubborn. Uh, and... Um, but we wish him well, and, and, and we know he's going he's gonna to be okay. And you should have Geller here at some point. Um, try to be a little less loquacious. Uh, I, I like to, there's a, a number of bills on my very competent staff uh, that I'd like to recognize if I can. So Kayla Francis, if you would stand up, started as a political science intern. So students in the back row, she was a 19-year-old political science major at FSU and is now my head legislative aide, along with Terry Cariota. Terry's right there. <laughs> Terry was a 23-year uh, veteran police uh, sergeant in the city of North Miami, but is our Tallahassee aide, and has successfully beat breast cancer this past year. <laughs> and our new intern uh, is Olivia Kalari from Hollywood, Florida, who's here, also in the and Maggie's still around, but as you know, uh, my chief of staff and former homicide trial partner, uh, Maggie, is now the chief of staff for the entire Democratic caucus. So she herds not one cat, but now 16. Uh, but uh, we love her, and she's obviously still around. So I'm available to open any questions. There were 2,300 bills uh, filed, a couple hundred that passed, and it's my job as policy chair for the Democratic caucus to read every single one of them. So I'm happy to take any questions. And of course, make myself available to the public. Uh, should you have any questions or concerns or uh, to be available. Uh, as you know, we like to be very accessible to our constituents, and I encourage and invite, and this is an open invitation, to continue to do so. Um, if we're not the group or the office that can handle or accommodate a particular request, we can absolutely find the agency or the individual or the entity that is, so ask us. Uh, no task too small or, or too great. I have the good fortune of being able, it's supposed to be a part-time legislature, but we do 80 to 100 hour weeks. That's just what we do. Um, but I also just want to thank all of you. It's of 15 cities, 97 elected officials. It's a pleasure to serve this city. So I'm open for any questions. Does anyone on the commission have any questions for the senator? Commissioner Shelley. Yeah, just one. Um, I know that the governor's ruling on the boundaries were just overturned by a federal judge. How does that affect what's going on up there now? I know they've hired, was it a professor from Harvard to redetermine the boundaries? So how is that being handled in Tallahassee and what's the governor's response obviously to that? So every 10 years with the decennial census, it's our task. Uh, usually during session, we only have one responsibility it's to pass a budget. During a decennial census that follows, we redraw maps. We did so for 120 House uh, seats, <clears throat> 40 state Senate seats, and we picked up, because of the <clears throat> population increase, a 28th congressional seat, which we also drew. The governor only has purview to, to basically veto or, or, or authority over one, and that's the congressional maps, not over the state and the House maps. So our district has been redrawn. Good news if you like me. I still have Aventura in my new district. Bad news if you don't, sorry. Uh, but the governor... <clears throat> 
announced on Twitter that he was rejecting congressional maps on arrival. He went ahead and vetoed. We went back for a special session. We passed congressional maps that were of his own drafting, the cartographer in his office. Um, and it, at the, I'll call it the trial level, a judge rejected it, but the appellate court um, has basically put a stay on it. So for this upcoming election cycle, at the very least for 2022, the congressional maps that were passed by, in special session a couple of weeks ago will actually rule and control going forward. Those are the boundaries. They will. Okay, that's interesting. Dr. Marks. I actually have a comment as opposed to a question. I, and I just want to share that as a newly elected official, brand new to politics, um, I was asked if I would support Senator Pizzo. I had no idea, future, future Senator Pizzo. I had no idea who Senator Pizzo was. I had the opportunity to meet him very early on in my career. And I will tell you, and I've worked with the public my whole life, I am blown away by the amazing work that you do and the dedication that you have shown. And I thank you so much for all of the people of Florida. You are a wonderful senator. Property insurance in two weeks. <laughs> please, speak, please. Speak um, up and, and send, send ideas that we will shamelessly steal and incorporate. Okay, so I hope everybody heard that, including the members of our audience. Please, property insurance. Just go on the website, email them any ideas that you have. Insurance is it's in the stratosphere now, and I think it's going to go higher. So please, he's asking ideas, thoughts, other ways of doing it. Please feel free. He really wants that input. I don't see any other commissioner wanting to talk, so I'm going to open it for public comment. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to ask the senator a question? <laughs> yeah, really. Really. And I think this gentleman, fourth from the left, you're the uh, wrestling captain. You're all, are they also the president of the crypto uh, club? Yeah. And I believe that you are seeking an internship in our office. Yeah, I am. And you were approved by our staff today, so you're going to go to our <laughs> Oh, congratulations, Tom. <laughs> Be mindful, kids. We troll on social media, so you passed. <laughs> Mr. Cross. I just, uh, Can you just state your name and address for the record, although we all know you? <laughs> uh, Paul Cruz, 2600 Island Boulevard, uh, number 702 in, in Williams Island. Proud uh, resident of the city of Lexington. Uh, and I just want to comment, too. I've known, uh, I was introduced to uh, Senator Pizzo by our wonderful mayor. And he is, um, if you think about where our country is with all the polarization and the Democrat and Republican and conservative and liberal, he is a prototype of the type of politician that is doing it for the right reasons and that will genuinely unite our country and bring us together. So I thank you for the as well as there is no local or federal um, uh, congressperson that's more responsive to the needs of his constituents than this good man. Thank you. Take out your cell phones. Take out your cell phones. In my years, this is one of the most contentious sessions I've seen. And as, as the senator said, very little got accomplished. I don't know, I just, there's one thing I do want to Yeah, so, of meaning. Uh, this session was the 17th bill that I originated that got passed in some form or permutation. Here's what I mean by that. If you don't have pride of authorship, as I'm sure most of the parents know here, you can get a lot done. Uh, two years ago, three 16-year-old high school students, two from Miami Beach High and one from Ransom, sent me an email, probably thinking I would never read it, about a suggestion to provide a lot of schools for the kids that overdose. And it's something really the school board and a lot of schools didn't want to recognize. And when Jenna Grodin sent me the email, she's like, you'll probably never read this. And I wrote her back and said, I'll do you one better. I'm actually going to file a bill because of you guys. And they got a lot of resistance because of partisanship, because the House wouldn't pass it, because the Democrat was filing it, whatever. This session with the opioid task force bill that passed, we slipped in as an amendment, a bill that was brought to me by three 16-year-old kids that will now save lives in schools because Narcan will be provided at schools when kids are overdosing, which is huge. So please go.
So I think the message is there. Every voice matters. Every voice matters. Don't be afraid to pick up your finger and get on your phone and write to the senator. You never know when that's going to make all the difference in the world. And can you say it backwards, sir? <laughs> All right, you know, the next item really brings a special joy to me, but I want you to look around the room first. And I think what you're gonna see is a preponderance of very strong women. We have been blessed in this city to have women as the backbone. Uh, the city is currently run by a woman. The mall is run by a woman. Florida Power and Lights representative to the whole northeast end of the county was a female. We have judges that are females from our city. And a number of months ago, we thought that it was well overdue that we recognize some of the real contributions that these people make every single day to the quality of our life. So I'm going to ask right now, and I will be including every commissioner, but right now I'm going to ask Vice Mayor Landman and Commissioner Friedland to please go down and join me. And I will continue my speech on that microphone. Those of you that know us know we operate a little bit more like a family than a municipality. And in coming up with the women that we wanted to honor, there were so many to choose from. And this is going to become an annual event. OK, Howard? <laughs> All right, it's going to be an annual event. But tonight's important. And there were three people 
that we kind of focused on as a whole city. And those three people are going to be the first three to be recognized now. So I know some, some people have already told me they have other commitments. So I'm going to, who's got Sally? I'm going to ask, oh well. I'm going to ask Commissioner Friedland to please do the first Women of Distinction Award from the city of Aventura. And this honor tonight goes to Sally Heyman. Sally Heyman. Sally Heyman is a lifelong resident of Northeast Miami-Dade and has served in public office since 1987. Throughout her career, she has been a champion for public safety. She works with a collection of charities that is far too long to list and stretches across protecting vulnerable populations, protecting personal freedoms, promoting environmental safeguards, animal protection, and providing services to Holocaust survivors. For the last 20 years, Sally has served Aventura as our county commissioner. She has done so with integrity, care, and a never-ending passion for delivering results. As she prepares to leave office in November, she does so having done immense good for countless people. Thank you. Sally. Thank you. The second woman being recognized by the entire city goes back, the next two actually go back to before the founding of the city, and the second person we're recognizing is Elaine Adler. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Elaine Adler in case you don't know her, which I doubt, but... Elaine Adler is an Aventura institution, having been a leader in our business community since before the city was incorporated. Since 1991, Elaine has led the Aventura Marketing Council as president and CEO. In her decades of service, she has contributed to the economic success of the city and brought the business community together to turn doing well into doing good. From AMC's Young Stars Showcase to her famous Meet the Judges Breakfast, it's hard to imagine Aventura without Elaine. <laughs> Married for 57 years with two children and seven grandchildren, Elaine continues to find the time and passion to serve Aventura. Elaine is well known for her on-time, no-excuses, get-it-done way of doing things. <laughs> Since arriving in Aventura, she has certainly gotten it done for our city. Though she often tells us that a hush came over the room, now would be a great time for a resou resounding applause for an icon of Aventura success, Elaine Adler. And as a special privilege, I get to recognize a woman that's a personal role model to me. I'm going to ask Jackie Sofer to please come up here. When I decided almost eight years ago to run for mayor, you were the first person I really went and talked to. You were warm, welcoming. We went out for coffee. We chatted. I'm here now. But let me share a little something. Jackie is the chairman and chief executive officer of Turnberry Associates, a real estate company that needs no explanation to the people of Aventura. And I can say as a mayor, wherever I go in this country to whatever convention, every other mayor goes over to me and says, oh, you're the mayor with the mall. <laughs> okay? And the mall is known internationally. She's a member of the Dean's Leadership Council at Harvard University Graduate School of Design, a member of the Executive Committee of the Board of Trustees at the University of Miami. Go Canes! a member of the Dean's Advisory Committee at the University of Miami School of Architecture, and a member of Cornell Center for Real Estate and Finance. As part of the Aventura community, Jackie has been instrumental in the economic development and success of this city. 
Her continued investments in business and philanthropy helped keep Aventura growing and prosperous. She was, can always be counted on to bring new experiences and opportunities while utilizing her own success to continuously give back to the city. Jackie, we love you and we deeply thank you. Very sweet. Okay, I'm going to ask everyone to stand, to still stand here, because we've got pictures of the whole group. I am going to ask Billy Joel to come down next. Yes. Okay, I'm happy to be here tonight for Stella Sonnenshine. Where are you, Stella? Okay. <clears throat> Come up here. Everyone can see this young lady now. <laughs> Stella Sonnenschein was born in Warsaw in 1935 as Esther Berenstein. She grew up in a warm and loving Jewish home with her father, Hirsch, her mother, Stefania, and her older brother, Josek, and had a happy life before the war. When the war broke out in 1939, the family initially was able to stay in their home, but was soon moved into tight quarters in the Warsaw ghetto with other families. At one point, the Nazis said that it was too unhealthy for children to remain in the ghetto and ordered all Jewish children in the ghetto to be brought to a central plaza along with their possessions in order to purportedly send them out to the countryside for their well-being. Ultimately, her parents recognized that it was too difficult and dangerous to keep a child hidden in the ghetto and decided to try to save Stella by giving her a new identity and sending her outside of the ghetto as a foster child. When Stella was seven years old, her parents gave her a new name, Stasia Borkowska. Did I pronounce it right? <laughs> okay. And trained her over and over with a new identity as a Polish Catholic orphan. Blonde and green-eyed, she was able to pass as a non-Jew. She was told to never tell anyone who she was, but to never forget who she was. She became a hidden child, first hiding herself physically and then hiding her true identity. Very nice. You still look the same. <laughs> Stella lived through the uprisings and many bombings, including one where somebody saved her life and she barely made it out of a building alive. During the war, Stella's father was part of the rebellion against the Nazis and was killed during a Polish underground meeting. Her brother Jozek was killed at age 13 when he was picked up by a Gestapo police wagon and brought to the notorious torture prison, Paulwick. Stella's mother, Stefania, dramatically saved by disguising herself as a fireman and marching out of the ghetto with other real firemen. After the war, Stefania searched for her daughter uh, without money or methods of communication. It took her a year crisscrossing Stella's path to find her daughter. They were happily reunited in 1946. After marrying, she moved initially to New York and settled in New Jersey, where she raised her two children, Gail and Howie. She later moved to Florida and now lives in Aventura. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Please stay, please stay here, and there will be pictures. Um, Commissioner Shelley. 
I have the distinct privilege of asking Cindy Olinsky to come up here, please. There's so much about Cindy. Since 1993, Cindy has called Aventura her home as a mom of two children, three dogs. She not only witnessed the impact this community has had and raised in it, but she has also played an active role in making that impact. As chairman of the Don Sofa Aventura High School Foundation, she raises funds to support our city's newest educational jewel. As president of the school's parent-teacher committee, she works to help support the teachers and staff. For the past 15 years, she had children of ACE, at ACES. She served as an ESAC committee member and on the parents' committee, including its chair. Cindy is a board member of the Aventura Police Department's Community Ambassadors Committee, better known as CAP. She also serves as a board member of Ellie's Army, which raises funds to support the families of critically ill children. She serves as the chair of the Ellie's Army Dirty Socks 5K held in Aventura each year. An attorney by trade, Cindy utilizes her legal background and MBA in her work as a broker associate for Berkshire Hathaway, earning her living in Aventura's favorite pastime, real estate. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Marks, can I ask you to come down? Marge Rosenblatt, would you come up, please? Marge Rosenblatt is an Aventura friend and an Aventura super volunteer. Having served our community at Aventura Hospital, the Aventura Marketing Council, and as a member of the Community Services Advisory Board, a regular at commission meetings and city events, Marge fully embodies what it means to be an active part of a community. She uses her very little free time to keep her neighbors informed and supports other additional causes close to her heart. Married for over 50 years with two sons, five grandchildren, and several great-grandchildren, Marge wears a lot of hats. Whether she is collecting food for FIU's student food pantry, funds for their Golden Gift Scholarship Program, or clothing for the North Miami Beach High School community store, Marge is always striving to make life better for those in and out of Aventura. An Aventura resident since before the city was founded, she has been a contributor to our community for longer than this building has been standing. We are so lucky that this special lady has chosen our city to live in and to share her amazing talents. Thank you, Marge. Yes, she is. <laughs> Everybody's girl Friday, Sally. <laughs> it's heavy, Marge. I, I think I'm, okay, you're right. It's heavy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Narotsky. Okay, so, sorry. Uh, last but not least, uh, Aletha Player. Saved a good one for the end. I'm sorry for the canned remarks here, but uh, this is what they gave me. Um, Aletha Player exemplifies the adage, so long as we love, we serve. There is no greater testi testimony to Ms. Player's love for this community than her unselfish service on various social, civic, and business boards. Aletha, Aletha served as an area manager in external affairs at Florida Power and Light Company, representing the company in Aventura and our broader community for 45 years. She has served on the Barry University's Board of Trustees and the Florida State Conference of the NAACP Board of Super Advisors. She also served as vice chair of the Aventura Marketing Council and served two years as the chair of the board of the North Dade Regional Chamber of Commerce. She is a former board member of Aventura Hospital and Medical Center, as well as the Carrie Meek Foundation. As a volunteer on the Aventura Police Department's Community Adv Ambassador Panel, she continues to serve our community, putting a lifetime of learning 
and achievement to work for all of our benefit. So congratulations. Next, I'm going, no, next, uh, Rachel Friedland. Dr. Stacy Roskin, would you please come up and join us? <laughs> Dr. Stacy Roskin is a board certified family physician. She has practiced in Aventura since 1997. As a family physician, Dr. Roskin focuses her, her practice on providing holistic, comprehensive, and progressive medical care. Dr. Roskin received her undergraduate degree from the University of Miami sorry, in 1989 and her medical degree from the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine in 2004. Go Canes. While attending the University of Miami School of Medicine, she received the prestigious Iron Arrow Award and was inducted into the Iron Arrow Honor Society of the University of Miami. She completed her family medicine residency from the Medical University of South Carolina in 1997. Dr. Roskin has been an active member of the medical staff of Aventura Hospital and currently serves as president of the medical staff of Aventura Hospital and Medical Center. Although her biggest passion is her relationships with her patients, she also loves spending time with her family and traveling. She is fluent in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she has been on the front lines to keep our community healthy and safe. She starred as our local medical professional in the city's This Is Our Shot COVID Vaccine PSA campaign. Dr. Roskin is a pillar of the local medical community and her day-to-day -day work touches the lives of countless Aventura residents. And I'm honored to say she will be my medical physician once my father retires as well. So. <laughs> Okay, Denise Lamon, please. Our next honoree is Sandra Sandy Kaplan. If you can please come up. So, born and raised in our nation's capital, Sandra Kaplan relocated to Aventura from Cherry Hill, New Jersey in 1996. After falling in love with the city from its founding, she knew she wanted to be active in its success. She even submitted a logo design for the city, though it was not chosen. After retiring, Sandy found, used her newfound time to become more engaged in the Aventura community, serving as secretary of her condo board at Coronado, editing their newsletter, the Coronado Voice, joining the Aventura Marketing Council, and serving on the city's community service advisory board for the last 10 years, where we met. Sandra Kaplan is the kind of community leader every community needs more of. Congratulations. And our last woman of distinction, and certainly not least, and I'm honored to be able to call this woman a friend. Mimi Lear, Miriam, would you come up? You know, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, not just in a city, in a state, in a country. And Judge Miriam Lear has been a judge since 1997. Judge Lear is currently the associate administrative judge of the civil division of the county court for the 11th Judicial Circuit. Thank you. <laughs> judge Lear presides at the North Dade's justice system in the civil division, handling bench and jury trials in the areas of subrogation, insurance, breach of contract, foreclosures, evictions, and small claims cases. She also hears uncontested divorces and reviews petitions for domestic violence injunctions. She's been married to her husband, Bruce, who's, who's proudly videoing this, knowing Bruce, an attorney for more than 34 years, and is a proud mother and grandmother. 
In furtherance of educating and mentoring students, Judge Lair co-founded the North Dade Justice Internship Program with Alonzo and Tracy Morning High School. This internship program is geared toward mentoring and educating students interested in becoming lawyers and judges. Judge Lear also founded and is the annual co-chair of the Law Day program, celebrated each year at the courthouse. The North Dade Law Day celebration is Miami-Dade's preeminent Law Day event and is attended by community leaders from throughout the country as well as students from neighboring schools. Judge Lear is the current Florida State Chair of the National Association of Women Judges, and in that capacity has taken a leadership role in the Color of Justice program. This program has brought judges and lawyers together with young girls and minorities to encourage them to consider legal careers. In 2012, Judge Lear co-chaired the annual conference of the National Association of Women Judges, bringing over 400 judges, lawyers, students, and educators from around the country to Miami for a four-day educational conference. She was honored for her extraordinary contributions as leader and organizer of this prestigious effort. I can't imagine the cases that this woman has seen since 1997 and what has happened with our bench since that time. But I'm going to end it with, I'm proud to call you my friend. You are a woman of valor. Thank you so, so much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Thank you. OK, I think. Picture time. So I think we need to move a little closer together. And I am aware that there is a heat game, so we're going to proceed as expeditiously as we can. But let's get the pictures taken. We've got to crunch in more. Come on. Crunch it. Crunch Okay, three feet this way. Come on, three feet. One, two, three. Keep moving. Keep moving. You just don't want to be in the picture. She never wants to be in I know. I don't think they're going to. Be careful that we don't want it to fall out. Can you get yours out, Elaine? Cindy, do you want to turn yours around? Your son there, he's funny. He's getting you. Let's go, let's go.
Okay. I'm going to try. <laughs> I fell help. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. Everyone. The next order of business is certificates of appointment. We have members of our community that volunteer to serve on the Arts and Cultural Center Advisory Board, and we're going to present those certificates to the members. So, Mr. City Manager, and I'm going to ask the gentleman to go down and assist the city manager with giving out those certificates, please. <laughs> there are no gentlemen up here. Don't we have the names? Okay, I'll just read them. Okay, if actually I'm going to ask also for members of the Community Service Advisory Board to also come down. Um, if you're a member, you can get up now. Ellen Elias, Judy Weinberg, Meredy Kotler, Joyce uh, Forcion, Judy Lutwin, Lisa Horowitz, Becky Freifield, Rita Regev, Edna Schneckel, uh, Mike Sorin, Jack, Jacqueline Riley, Sandra Kaplan, Marge Rosenblatt, Sherry Supervine, Daniel Naim, David Pulver. <laughs> By first names again. Where's the rest of the, Where's the rest of us? From the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank each and every one, Daniel, we want to thank you for all the hours you put in volunteering for all of the activities and events at the Cultural Arts Center and within the city. Kids are here. I'm not. I'm How are you feeling in better? There. Yeah. I guess not, Michael. Good, Michael Stern. Where's my city manager? <laughs> oh, maybe no. You're off. You're on. It's it's my. I I don't read his handwriting. Yeah, you're on. Okay, normally, and, and I love the buzz and the excitement, and, and I'm sorry I'm not letting you appreciate it more. Normally, we would have an update uh, from our ACES Charter K-8. Mr. Dr. Tricala could not be here tonight. He really is under the weather. So we're going to go right to an update from Dr. Jeff McKee. Uh, principal at Don So for Aventura High School. Thank you. Uh, amazing to be in the presence of so many talented women and, and great leaders in our community and always in the presence of our leaders who are commissioners and our mayor as well. So it's, it's truly an honor and inspiring. Um, Senator Puzo, I want to thank you for your hard work 
in providing more money for education. Uh, we promise we'll put it to wonderful use, but it's been a banner year for educators, and, and again, it's greatly appreciated. Um, Ms. Orlinski, thank you for your work on behalf of Don Sofer High School. Uh, this Sunday, there's a great event. Hopefully, you guys will be able to swing by. Um, there's a Brito unveiling for a mosaic that'll be on the side of the building. Beautiful, beautiful project. And thank you for, from start to finish, putting that together, planning this event. So 12 noon this Sunday, we'd love to see you all out. Um, I don't know if Ms. Sofer already departed, Jackie, but anyway, she's also so great to have that name associated with our school. Uh, we've just gone through Educator Appreciation Week, which is a very special week. Uh, a great joy to, to have our students express their appreciation, so many parents as well. And the greatest appreciation by far uh, that teachers feel is the daily opportunity they have to interact. Several of our students are back here. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here, and you're going to hear from a couple of them in just a minute. Um, but that, just that blessing of being in your presence every day. Mr. Combrink is one of our appreciated educators, and he's nodding in agreement. Uh, there's nothing great. We have amazingly, you all are so supportive, the parents so supportive. Um, but again, just to be able to share in the daily growth experiences and learning of our students is by far uh, the greatest appreciation we can experience. And that is what we use right now. We, we're recruiting top talent from all over the country to come teach at our school. And, and you guys see me walking around with interesting looking people. That's what I'm doing is just having them meet the kids and experience your warmth and goodness. And, and without fail, they come. So it, it's a great, great experience for all of us to be with you all. Without further ado, we, we are progressing. You know, we have our three years. Um, this is our third year of operation. Next year, we add a senior class. So first, you're going to hear from our first senior class president, ever, and those of you who saw the play, she also was Morticia, you may not recognize her with the curly hair, uh, <laughs> but Mia's going to come speak in a moment, and then for our full, full school, it'll be our first Student Government Association complete uh, governing group, and, and you'll hear from our Vice President, Daniel Zikri. So uh, Mia, without further ado, come, the microphone is yours. Good evening, Mayor, um, Vice Mayor, and esteemed commissioners. My name is Mia Beaton, and I've had the honor of being the president for the class of 2023, a role in which I am excited to take on again next year. <laughs> These last few weeks have been filled with ACE, AP, and state tests, which have given us the opportunity to show all of the knowledge we have gained throughout the year. The tests may be stressful, but I and my fellow students feel confident in the skills that our teachers have instilled in us. The junior class is excited to host its first ever prom on Saturday, May 21st. After lots of planning and endless support from the city, our prom commission is truly ready for a magical night. We would like to thank the commission for its very generous donation that has allowed our prom committee to work to make prom an amazing evening. We would also like to thank the city for their unwavering support of the DSAHS Performing Arts Program at our past production of The Adams Family the second ever musical put on by our school, and the first one where we sold out the theater. And we are very excited about that. Once again, thank you to the commission for the support. I will now turn it over to Daniel, our newly elected vice president for the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Daniel Zikri, and I will serve as the Vice President of Don Sofer Aventura High School next year. It truly is an honor to have been elected to this title and be able to represent our school next year, as we will be at full capacity. Next year, our school will be at full capacity, as just stated, and students will continue to work together and create a future that will represent Don Sofer throughout Aventura. Don Sofer Aventura High School has been a household name for the past three years now. And many students, as I've walked through the, hall, the halls, have always talked about being eager to attend schools and always wanting to learn new things as our teachers are really, really good. Don Sofa Aventura High School, um, I have attended it for three years, and everybody has referred to me as a student who has the most school spirit in the school. And my goal for next year is to kind of pass that message along and create more of a family-type school, getting everyone to work together and show more school spirit. Uh, I can safely say that with Sophia, the actual president of the school, um, by my side, Don Sofa Aventura High School will have one of the best, if not the best, SGA committee in the next year. 
I would also like to thank the esteemed commissioners for allowing all of this to happen, as without you guys, none of this will be possible. So I want to say thank you, and we cannot, get, we cannot wait to get started next year. Thank you, Daniel. Um, we're, we're done, huh? Oh, God, okay. <laughs> and we, Mia, Daniel, thank you so much. And, and thank you both for what you do for the school. I really appreciate it. And I have to, Mia, give you a shout out for Morticia. If you didn't see the Addis family, you missed a great play. Absolutely a great play. Stay tuned for next year. Okay. Um, next, our youth advisory board has a presentation for their project, Aventura Strong. So Carolina, the group, come on. <laughs> Carolina was a Senate page for uh, Senator Pizzo. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Say that I, oh, for my, a lot of my peers, that for those five weeks, the most memorable moment was meeting the governor. Mine was getting the hat at the softball game. So <laughs> thank you for that one. <laughs> so we're going to start off. Good evening, everyone, and thank you all for coming. Um, we are the Youth Advisory Board, and today we will be discussing our new project and the project we've been focusing on this past couple of months, which we like to call Aventura Strong. The idea for Aventura Strong originated from Commissioner Dr. Landra Marks in an effort to bring our community back together after the isolation COVID left on Aventura. We were tasked to create a mental health initiative for the city of Aventura. After citing the direction we wanted to move forward with, we created the mission statement. Aventura Strong's purpose is to rebuild our minds and bodies, reunite our passions, and reconnect our community. The first R, rebuild, represents improvement of mental health within yourself. This means honing in on your mental health and using your own emotional intelligence to rebuild yourself so that this strength transcends into others and facilitates active and productive community involvement. By reigniting your, our passions, we simply mean finding the things you love and doing them. By fueling your passions in a collaborative and inviting way, it also ignites new passions and interests in those around you as well. The third R, reconnect, represents rekindling your connection with the community. Amid such precarious times within the last two years, many feel isolated or felt isolated, and this initiative's goal is ultimately to focus on the next steps in promoting goodness in the community, keeping these three principles in mind. To implement these ideas, we started with strength stones. These stones were provided very generously by the commission to serve as a calming tool for times in need. The idea is to acquire a stone that represents a color close to you and to keep it in your hands. The stones are a way to remind someone of the good in the situation. The Youth Advisory Board is incredibly eager to share these stones with the city of Aventura. So we plan the Healthy Walk Tour. This will be a walk around the circle starting at the Government Center where we will be giving out the strength stones and educating the participants on ways to improve mental health. A few highlights we prepared for the walk are three stations along the way to share gratitude and strength. For one of the stations, we collaborated with Stand With Us, which is an international nonprofit Israel education organization that inspires and educates people of all ages and backgrounds. One of the stations is an experiential Israel program they offer, specifically called Grateful Days. It's a large blackboard um, where people write what they are grateful for with white chalk. And this ties into the walk because it emphasizes the mental health post-pandemic. Hence the motto, rebuild, reignite, and reconnect. Everyone here who would like to join us, the walk will be Sunday, May 22nd from 9 to 7. We are really excited and we hope to see all you, you all there. Our social media handle on Instagram is at Aventura Strong. And we strongly recommend that you follow us where we post our updates, mental health blogs, and little tips and tricks to stay happy. The link to our website can be found in the QR code. It includes resources to Aventura Strong's social media, psychiatry, and mental health tracking. So as previously mentioned, these are our mental health logs, and they are meant for you to keep your progress and for you to build these healthy habits and keep them and to stay on top of your mental health. 
So now we, the Youth Advisory Board, would be happy to answer any questions the Commission has. Do you have something you want to present to someone? I do. I was going to leave that for the end, but I can do okay. that now. Well, what, at your pleasure. <laughs> okay. At your pleasure. we Will do. we Will do. So we just all want to say thank you to Dr. Linda Marks and Commissioner Marks, because without you, this would have just been, this wouldn't have been possible, really. You came with, to us with the idea to have these stones, and from that, you kindled the fire on all of us to build our mission statement, to build this walk, to do so much more to help our community. And we recently learned that you have been going through something in the death in the family, and so I think it was fitting for us to present one of our first thousand um, mental health stones to you, and so you can hold it and know that you have a community here in the city of Ventura that will always be with you and that has you in our thoughts and in our prayers always. So thank you so much for everything, and here you can bring it over. <laughs> I just need to say that we've gone through such a long and difficult challenge with COVID and so many people have been affected. And to have the pleasure and the privilege of working with this group of people and for them to understand these needs is unbelievable. And for your presenting me with the stone at a very challenging time, bless you all, bless you. Thank you. So I think I'm at the point where do any of the commissioners have any questions for any of the members of the Youth Advisory Board about the project? Comment. Vice Mayor Landman. Um, as always, I'm always so impressed by, you know, the ideas, the, the passion, the way that you just talk about these projects that you put together. And it's just, you know, this is just a little life lesson that's going to go a long way, and it's just the beginning of an amazing, successful life in whatever all of you pursue. But you're all future leaders, and I'm just I'm so proud to see what you know what comes out of this youth advisory committee. So, congratulations. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Does anyone in the community have a question? Okay, then we're going to thank you. We look forward to May 22nd. Yes, yes. And Please join us in our walk from 9 to 11, May 22nd. And we'll be meeting at the library? At no, the at the government. Oh, the government. Sorry, sorry. Here. 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 So yes, here. At City Hall, starting at government. Yes, and it'll be the circle. Okay. And we're giving out strength stones. Yes, we will be giving out. Come. We'll be giving out the other 999 strength stones. So you can also <laughs> join us there. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is the consent agenda, and I'm going to ask the city manager if, there, if there's anything to be removed or added to the consent agenda. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to have item F removed. Okay. Item F has been requested to be removed, so I'm going to ask for a motion for items A, B, C, D, E and G. A motion made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Um, I'm going to request the city clerk to review the item. Well, not really, because we're just uh, we're just voting. Just I'm calling call a roll call vote on the consent minus F. Commissioner Friedland. Yes. Commissioner Joel. Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And I'm going to now request that you please read item F. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, approving the Fourth Amendment to agreements, the agreement concerning commercial advertising signs between the City of Aventura and Clear Channel Outdoors, Inc., authorizing the city manager to execute and to take all actions necessary to implement the agreement and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of the resolution? Yeah. Can I have a second? Motion made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Joel. I'm going to request that the city clerk review the item. 
Um, I believe the city manager is going yeah. to be reviewing that. Mayor? Yeah. We're voting on it now. Okay. The item that is was removed is what we are voting on. It was removed from consent mm -hmm. to allow no, us to I be able to discuss it. I no. Completely. no, it was no, no, removed no. from consent only so that we could discuss it and vote on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, do do you want to do it instead of the clerk? Actually, C Commissioner Marks. Would Commissioner like Marks. Bring it up. Yes, thank you, Mayor. The reason that I ask that we pull the item is twofold. Can I draw your attention to page three of six of the resolution? And um, there, there is a typo in there. At the last workshop, when we talked about Clear Channel, I had asked, just, just crunching the numbers and looking at profit versus uh, what we were earning, I had asked our city manager to go back and see if he could negotiate with them because, quite frankly, the numbers really were very much in their favor. And I want to thank our, our city manager for doing exactly that and going back. And um, what happened as a result of that, that there is an extra $10,000 that we will be recovering. And so that, that is the first part. I really want to say thank you to our city manager. The second part has to do with the top paragraph. And if you will look at line uh, four, it says written out the sum of $30,000 but in parenthesis, you'll see 35,000. And I believe it's probably just an error of cutting and pasting. But the correct number is 35,000. And in the next um, line, you're going to see a total of 60,000. But then when you see in parenthesis, it's really 70,000. So we've received $10,000 more yearly. And that's thanks to our city manager. But the there is a, a typo. And so we need to have that corrected before we approve that. And I don't know, Mayor, if we have to do it as amended or something or to I think it's a Scribner error, Mr. Uh, it's, Attorney, and I yeah, think it's we a can Scribner's go error that. because you have the right amount uh, that's, uh, you know, in the document. Okay. And often in financial letters, the in the parentheses is the new number. So I'm not sure if that's what our uh, finance director was doing or not. But we can we can now... Anybody else want to talk? Any commissioners yeah, want to talk? Yeah, real quick on this. Commissioner Nawaz. If I could, just the public should know that kudos to Dr. It's not Vice Mayor anymore, but Dr. Linda Marks. Uh, but Linda, you're the one that pushed back and you got the city the extra dough. So um, public acknowledgement there and we're grateful for that. So it really was you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, do any members of the public wish to address this item, item F on consent? All right, then I'm closing it for public comment, and I'll ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item seven, we have no zoning hearings tonight. Item eight, we have no ordinances on first reading. We have no ordinances on second reading. We have no resolutions for input tonight. That brings us to item number 11, reports. Um, any members of the commission have any reports that they want to um, speak on now? Reports. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's not a report, but uh, I just see on the upcoming meetings, that I just want to confirm that we have the 17th is also a meeting, correct? Because if you look at page three, it just lists the 19th. Just want to be on the same page here with everyone. Ron and we're okay. Thank you. Any anyone else on the commission? Okay, then I'm going to open up this meeting to public comment. I'm going to request the city attorney to review with the commission members the purpose of this item. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So the purpose of uh, this item is to give the public. Uh, each speaker has no more than three minutes to make a uh, presentation to the uh, city commission. It's not an opportunity to have a dialogue with members of the commission, but just simply to state your uh, and make a statement about issues within the jurisdiction of the city commission. Thank you. I'm now opening the public comment portion of the meeting. Anybody wishing to address the public, please come up here, state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Please don't be shy. It doesn't matter who goes first. We haven't started it.
My name is Ellen Elias. I live in 21224 Harbor Way, Aventura, Florida. And I'm here tonight because I'm a serious environmentalist. We know that Aventura is proud to be a green local government committed to reducing its carbon footprint on the environment. I'm speaking tonight because I am very concerned about plastic pollution, and while there are preemptions in the state of Florida that prevent cities from passing certain ordinances, many cities and counties in Florida have found ways to pass ordinances that will reduce the use of these plastics. As I am sure you are aware, plastic pollution is a threat to our oceans and marine life, to human health, to climate, and to our tourism-based economy. There should be statewide action to reduce single-use plastics, or at the very least, local municipalities should have home rule on this issue. The problem, an estimated 33 billion pounds of plastic enter the ocean every year, and I see it every day when I walk the marina. That's roughly the equivalent of dumping two garbage trucks full of plastic into the ocean every minute. Plastic litter travels through storm drains and also clogs storm drains. Cleaning up this litter is very costly. Plastic pollution is bad for tourism and has other negative economic impacts. Only 9% of all plastic waste generated has actually been recycled. The plastic pollution crisis is too large to be solved solely through individual voluntary actions, although I have tried to do my part as a classroom teacher, prohibiting plastic water bottles in my classroom going back as far as 2010. Possible solutions. Pass local ordinances to reduce single-use plastics, including polystyrene foam co food containers and cups. Pass local resolutions supporting removal of state preemptions and support home rule for plastics legislation. Create plastic-free zones, starting with this beautiful city hall, as an example to the entire city of Aventura. I'm noticing the plastic bottles up there. Thank you, Commissioner Landman. Reduce all waste by reducing disposables and promoting the idea of reuse and refill. Recent actions, April 2022, Broward County passed a resolution to restrict the distri distribution sale and use of expanded foam items and single-use plastic straws, et cetera. In January 22, the city of Lauderhill also passed an ordinance. Janu June 2021, Boca Raton passed an ordinance. March 2021, our neighbor Sunny Isles passed an ordinance. November 2020, Fort Lauderdale, the city took an ordinance reducing plastics, and in October of 2020, the city of Hollywood has, was the first local community to reduce plastic pollution by unanimously passing an ordinance prohibiting the use of polystyrene, et cetera, single-use plastics, that means plastic forks, et cetera, et cetera. Please take action to reduce single-use plastics in our city as well as statewide or at least work to remove the preemptions. In addition to passing a local ordinance for our city, I respectfully request that you support a bill to repeal the preemptions on single-use plastic bags and polystyrene foam and or a statewide bill to reduce single-use plastics. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, Larissa Dadnik, 3300 Northeast 191st Street. Um, 1814. Online on change.org website, I have stumbled across two petitions related to the city of Aventura. Residents are asking for sports courts in the area of Veterans Park. Personally, my family has lived in Del Prado, which is on the southern end, since 2012, and there are not enough sports activities suitable for all ages in the proximity, while there are many condominiums in that area. Many people have to travel far for heavy traffic to play tennis and pickleball, which has been getting uh, popularity. I believe that residents of South End should, of Aventura should be heard and considered when improvements are done to our city. The second petition that was there was calling to protect Founders Park South. Locals adore the spot for its safety, peacefulness, hills and water view, and of course, luscious trees. I regularly come there with my mother, who is a cancer survivor, and my husband, who has a stressful job as a pilot. We see many people enjoying the park with us, runners, toddlers, elderly, disabled children, and everyone else find their tranquility, peace, and recharge there. I would like to make the voice of both petitioners heard and be considered when planning for the future projects. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Aventura Council, commissioners, and esteemed residents. We need your name and address, please. 
My name is Xiu Wang. My address is 3115 Northeast 184th Street. As a proud Aventura resident, I love our city for excellence. That being said, I'm here tonight to discuss some alternative options regarding our proposed sports court project at Founders Park. Many of our local residents enjoy the Founders Park sauce. Here, toddlers often take their first steps. Youngsters learn to ride their bicycles, and families enjoy picnics under the shady trees. Some children experience their first lesson on insects and plants. This serene sport is a park where locals connect with nature and also with one another. Shouldn't we try to protect this beautiful sport our locals to revere? If we must spend money, why shouldn't we plant some shade trees and provide additional greenery and habitat for living things? Perhaps we could build a big garden where children of all age could learn more about this celebrated creature. Building more sports courts at Founders South will increase traffic that will hinder easy access to Aventura Marina and Hayden Bay. This will make life more difficult for more than a thousand residents in those two communities alone. On the other hand, there is a place for the sports court, also in Aventura. Our great city has our other parks. For example, one is a two-acre veterans park, which could readily house this proposed court. More than 10 multi-family communities are within five walking minutes from the park. Additionally, the mature trees surrounding the park will provide shade. Many parents with young children in nearby areas would welcome sports court as some of the communities do not have the sports court due to limited space. Another area that would work is the area adjacent to the new high school. This could serve as an after-school sports center. This would align nicely with after-school programs that promote physical exercise for our youth. A third option is a founder's nose. We could fit a basketball court behind tennis court. One of the tennis court could be used for pickleballs, saving the big trees that adorn the surroundings. A final option is to share the wealth by distributing the sports court evenly between veterans' waterways and the founders' knots. Ideally, we could create something useful and pleasant, but protect the existing beauty and serene sighting that founders' sauce provide. Locals who enjoy the founders' park sauce will be happy to see this little park protected, protected and the natural beauty intact for years to come. We can, we should, create something useful, but at the same time, preserve the oasis. Okay, I'm going to have to ask. I'm going to have to ask you to wrap it up. You've exceeded your time limit. That Founders Park engenders. With my suggested options, we can accomplish just that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, were we able to get yeah. the PowerPoint up for Jade? That's frozen. I don't, I'm not sure if I can fix that part. I'm sorry. Let me stop there. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone else can go and then. Is there another speaker? Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Can you use the mic, please, so we could hear? Mic is open. Thank you. Issues with cars. Can you please give your name yes, and your address? My name is, is Leila. My address is 19501 West Country Club Drive, Aventure. Issue with cars as they are very loud and there is a noise pollution in addition, of, in addition to cause a back. Backfire, they have a lot of 
uh, unburned fuel. And it explodes in a house and bad for environment. Florida is not like California to have a smog check. There is a gray Mustang, for example, who lives next to Founders Park and passes by the city hall and police department. And I am amazes me that he is able to press on a gas pedal without any issues. In addition to that, there are many other cars with the same issue. Just watch what is going on Saturdays. I came by the police department regarding this and I was told that we don't have a budget to purchase the equip equipment that measures the sound. Isn't the police supposed to enforce the law? If police can dismiss the problem by just saying we don't have the budget, then what is the use of giving our hard earned tax dollars to lawmakers for nothing? I am wondering how many of people in charge of the police department ex exact, uh, actually live in this city. How would you feel if the same was happening in your neighborhood and you or your kid or your parents would make up in the middle of the night because of the passing car? All you need is just one device and use it in front of the city hall that would be sufficient to ticket the violators. Two months ago, in front of the target, Whole Food across from Aventura Hospital, there were a lot of, there were a lot tire marks that Don um, had done by a spin cars. So no one uh, just checked the camera. And this issue is happened most of the time. And also, I am speaking about the cars who have a tint uh, windows, and uh, we cannot identify them. So my my seconds is enough. So I am not. <laughs> I don't have enough time. And also in Dixie Highway, um, right? I don't know. It is falling the Aventura City right by, uh, right by the bridge on the Ives Dairy. The, there is a issue for making right turn because at the same time they are making left turn legally. So it happens either together. Your time is up. I'll let you finish your sentence. Sorry? No, not yet, but that's enough to me. Okay. Thank just, you. Just, just a, um, a something else. Uh, if you give me just 10 seconds. Go for 10 seconds. Okay, thank you. As we all know that separation of church and state is the foundation of this country, I think city needs to celebrate the national holiday to the best it can. However, city plans and spend money for Christmas for Christian and other times change the traffic light to a blinker to Jewish community during their religious events. In this case, we must respect other religions and do the same for other. There are many Muslim that live in this city and we need to celebrate the event as well. I am not a Muslim, just for your information. Just. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shade Stein. I'm a junior at Donsover Aventure High School, and my address is 3370 Northeast 190th Street. I'm here today to present a bill for food recovery and food waste for an opt-in food recovery organization in Aventura. So a major global issue in the scholarly conversation right now is food waste and food insecurity. Food waste contributes to 6% of annual greenhouse gas emissions, and food insecurity has risen since COVID so that, oh, wait so that one in six Floridians now is food insecure. It, re it rose by almost a million people from 2.8 million people food insecure to 3.6 million people food insecure after COVID. So as a progressive and able community, Aventura has the tools to solve this. We can solve this through a food recovery opt-in service where we would, businesses and organizations who have expired food or produced food would be able to 
donate this food to food recovery organizations so there would be less waste and less hungry people. To simplify that, Aventura can let businesses who produce food to donate the maximum amount of edible food they would otherwise throw away to food recovery organizations. So there would be less food in landfills and there would be more food for food insecure people. This would actually be not disruptive to businesses at all since it's an opt-in service and they have the option to participate or not. Additionally, after reaching out to several businesses in Aventura, a lot of supermarkets already and restaurants already do this. So it would just be written in stone that they do this. And um, so the way this would work is that Food Rescue USA has already volunteered to help Aventura with this program. And so they have an app where you can sign on as either a volunteer or a business, and it pairs the volunteer with the business. That way they can go to the business, pick up the food, and donate it to local food recovery organizations. A few of them are listed here. There's also the FIU Food Bank. Um, so businesses who, who do choose to participate in this would have no liability because um, Included would be a legal protection clause forbidding legal action to be taken against businesses who donate food that was expired or caused medical harm. This would be modeled after the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Food Donation Law, which allows for food to be donated in good faith without liability to the donor. Lastly, I just wanted to add that I reached out to a bunch of businesses who produce food in Aventura who have signed this letter of support for this bill, who would be happy to participate. That is Barrio Latino Aventura, Winn-Dixie, Target, and Chick-fil-A. So overall, this bill would help the environment, it would help people who are food insecure, and it would look favorably upon Aventura for promoting sustainable practices. Thank you. Thank you. The city manager will get back in touch with all of you that have spoken tonight. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Please. Um, before I do, I want to pass you guys the ticket. Please give it to the city clerk. OK. OK. Um, do I press something here? Oh, I'm starting already. Hi, I'm Jackie Cabral. I live at 18470 Northeast 30th Place in Aventura, Florida, 33160, also known as um, Aventura Bay, directly across from Village by the Bay and Veterans Park. I'm a mother. I'm coming here to express my extreme concern and um, anxiety about the speed racers that come down the traffic, the road 185th Street. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour. Sometimes I feel as if they're going 100 miles per hour. The date on there was October 5th, 2021, and I should have come here sooner to speak to you guys. The other day, I'm in my house and I hear a screeching sound noise and a bang. I knew immediately this could not be good. So if you know where I live would be against the wall. I run outside, the speed racer in a Tesla lost control coming down into the curve and hit another car on the other side of the road as it was oncoming. There are children that ride their bikes, mothers that take their babies to the park. That could have ended very tragically if it was just one, one inch over into the sidewalk, because it was almost there. And I'm urging the city officials to reach out to the county, because I understand this is a county issue, and ask for speed bumps, crosswalks, especially where the school bus is let out. From Aventura Bay, we can't, we don't even feel safe, the entire community, to walk across the street to Veterans Park. No one stops. When you come around that curve, you, you almost can't stop. We're petrified parents. We've reached out to the city multiple times. 
I've called 911 several times and, and said, I hear them. I hear them coming around all the way from 185th, where Walgreens is, circling back around and going out to Fresh Market. And they just do it like this, drag racing. I see donuts in front of the, the temple there. Just, you can see it in the, tarp, the black circles. I feel like... Yeah, exactly. Okay, You're talking to the commission. I can't let you talk to the members of the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. And I think your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Should I take it? Can I keep it? Should I take it off? I'll, 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 if you can hear me, I'll keep it. <laughs> I'm very loud. Um, good evening. My name is Alicia Bonvicini. I live at 3029 Northeast 188th Street. And I'm also here tonight because I feel very strongly about the local effort of protecting Founders Park South. Founders Park South, as you know, sits across the street from its homonymous larger park. And it is a preferred park for those residents who are looking for a calm and peaceful park experience. I'm here because I feel very strongly that the project of building tennis courts and pickleball courts at Founders Park South will inevitably change the park and ultimately deprive Aventura residents of the city's only green oasis. Urban planners and mental health researchers know that the green spaces are crucial for mental well-being, but not all parks are created equal. We all know that building pickleball and tennis courts will change the nature of the park. It will make it noisy, crowded, chaotic. It will create more traffic in the area and will deprive residents of the only calm natural park in the city. Human beings need to be able to stop, sit still, be mindful, be present, and what a perfect place uh, Founder Park South is for our residents to do just that. Uh, these are not secondary things in people's lives. Uh, and that is probably the reason why every person I have encountered and spoke to about this project uh, was very surprised uh, by it. Uh, residents cannot wrap their heads around the fact that the park will be altered to make room for sport courts. They cannot wrap their heads around the fact that they, that they will lose the only calm park in their busy city. Because it's hard to wrap your head around this project. It is truly radical to want to dismantle such a special and unique park to make room for sports courts that could be built somewhere else. In 2022, in a city that calls itself a green city and that also is being recognized as such, it should not be happening. All we ask is you, for, for you to take the concerns of the many residents who are clearly opposed to this project seriously. And in fact, as was mentioned before, there are multiple petitions that are circulating online about this protection, protection effort. All we ask is to please consider a new location for the sports courts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anthony Tony Tedesco. I live at 19101 Misty Point, 2903. I'm also talking about, oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, Founders Park South. You do realize that is the only park in Aventura that is for everyone. It's not a sports park. It's not, it is just a wonderful, quiet area that's probably the only one that's left in Aventura. I think it was said, was it Joni Mitchell said, they paved over paradise and put in a parking lot? We're talking about paving over paradise and putting in pickleball, okay? We have Founders Park. It's hardly being used. It's ideal, you can put in eight pickleball courts over there. Pickleball and tennis do not go together. I live at Mystic Point. We had to take out several uh, tennis courts. The animosity is unbelievable. And pickleball is more for, and I hate to say this, people my age, okay? <laughs> and I can't know how I got here. And I would believe that Founders Park is the ideal location for that. And let's leave the last bit of paradise that we have in Aventura. I was fortunate to be here when this was unincorporated day counter and I seen the wonderful job you guys have done. So let's, let's try and keep things as beautiful as we can. Pickleball is pickleball, let them have it. And after all, they do have, a, there's the restrooms there, there's seating and a pavilion. It's ideal, it's all set up and ready to go. Why destroy our oak trees, our royal palms and all the trees that are in our park for pickleball? 
Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tova Itzak. I'm a resident of Aventura for the last 12 years. Um, I'm here to echo um, some of my friends about the... Um, Can I ask you for your address? Excuse me? Can I ask you for your address? Oh, uh, 18 of, of 18021 Biscayne Boulevard. Thank you. El Prado. Um, okay, uh, echo, echoing my friends about um, the park. Um, it, this is a small park, uh, the only park that is uh, quiet and peaceful for seniors like me uh, that come to the park to unwind and to relax um, without noise of kids. I have nothing against noise of kids. I have my own kids. I was a preschool teacher. But at a certain age, uh, people need some peace and quiet and not bump into balls and bicycles running around. Um, again, I think my friends said much better. And um, please uh, help the seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michelle Tedesco, 19101 Mystic Point Drive, Aventura. I have had wonderful gardeners here express their opinions far more understandable than what I have to offer tonight. What a wonderful city we live in to have public gardens for all the residents. They can walk by, they can look, and they can be so fortunate to have their own raised garden beds. Moving a garden that has been growing for a number of years is a tragic expense, first of all, for this city, and heartbreaking for the gardeners who do garden there almost every day. I'm only bringing one small example. Many of us at the gardens allow people to come in. We gladly open the gate. They bring children in. They bring, uh, oh, excuse me, other residents in. I was here before. I asked the commissioners, how many of you have gone to the garden? Really? How many of you have seen the plants, the hard work, the beautiful insects? And I have brought with me a monarch caterpillar. How many of you have held a monarch caterpillar, have seen regular monarchs and butterflies? When children and adults, and hopefully commissioners, whenever anyone comes into the garden, many of us here, thank you, go out of their way to have other people learn. I mean, there are children and adults that have never touched plants, don't know the names of flowers, trees, or plants, and have never even held a caterpillar in their hands. Our park has been here for many years. It's an environmental sanctity for all of us. I am asking, please, sincerely, um, sincerely please consider this park. Please don't move our only real green area and don't take away the opportunity of many, many adults and children in Aventura to experience the joy and happiness that many of us have. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Commissioner. So glad to be here. Thank you for having me. My name is Manya Borman. I'm a resident at 4000 Island Boulevard, <clears throat> Unit 1001, Aventura, Florida, 33160. And I'm here on the issue similar to the garden. Um, I have done research. I have friends also who have, we've collaborated, and we have tried several times to get a garden. And we have visited the gardens, and there's uh, gardens that are not used. Some of them are half used. Some of them are weeded. Some of them are totally gorgeous. Butterflies, and I, and I, I love it. Um, I'm having a difficult time securing a garden for myself, and my girlfriends are too. 
I have gone onto the uh, Breck Center site, the garden, and they seem to be rolled over and rolled over. And so now I have figured out a few of the gardens that have not been touched. They're just weeds. And I'm wondering how, when's the expiration for people who have a garden? What's the time length of having a garden? And how can I get a garden? And so I'm bringing it to your attention as a resident of the city that myself, Dr. Julie Bruno, um, Veronica Diaz, we would all like to be getting gardens. And we all have children, and we would love to share that opportunity to garden with our children, which would be super amazing, and I think we just heard about that. So thank you so much for letting me speak. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. The city manager, city manager's got it, and he will get back in touch with you. Anybody, is there anyone else that wishes, wishes to address the commission? No? Okay. Um, seeing as there is no other business, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Doc Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. This meeting is formally adjourned.